living well. Living well really is the aim of any of the human being in our life, starting from any child patient to any other to growing patients. So what we'll try to do in our program is to give you the medical information in a very light meal and in a very simple way and language. We'll try to discuss about diseases, the causes of the diseases, the symptom of any disease, and then we'll finish by trying to treat or suggest any treatment for those diseases. So the aim of Living Well is not only yours, it's also our aim in our program to give you a very light meal of medical information in a very simple language. Hi there. We all know that the largest, let's say, one, or one of the largest structure or uh, organ inside the human body, it is the bone or, for example, the skeletal, let's say, system, which involves starting from the skull up to the uh, small bone of the leg. So all of these bones needs blood supply that usually will supply the bone with the, uh, let's say, important minerals. And calcium is one of the most important minerals that the bone will need to build up along with other vitamins and other, let's say, component of the body. So what happened if the blood supply stopped from a partial or from a part of the bone? So this is today, we'll discuss it, and I will just try to tackle around it, and it is called the avascular necrosis, or in the medical term, we call it osteonecrosis. So in a very simple way, or in a very simple word, the avascular necrosis, it is the cut or the stop of the blood supply to the bone or to the part of the bone, which might lead to destroying that specific part or even that specific joint. A vascular necrosis is really a serious complication that might happen to any person, but there is some person or patient, let's say, at a very high risk compared with the other. So the pathophysiology, or let's say the mechanism of a vascular necrosis, in a very simple words, it is the blood supply usually will cut uh, from supplying a specific bone or a specific joint or a specific part in that specific bone and then this will lead to the bone will become very weak and it might lead to the fracture which we call it pathological fracture that is due to uh, medical reason. So as I've already mentioned that the avascular necrosis or osteonecrosis can happen at any age, but actually the peak age of developing such a complication will be between the age of 30 to 50. So those patients are at a very high risk of developing avascular necrosis. Another thing which is also very important, what are the symptoms that usually those patients will be presented with? One of the most important symptoms that the patient will be presented with, it is pain. And usually it will be very severe pain at the site of the uh, avascular necrosis or at the site of the damaged bone actually. As I've already explained that the avascular necrosis will lead to fracture or a partial fracture in that specific bone and that fracture will cause severe pain to the patient. And even sometimes the pain will be bilateral in both, uh, let's say, uh, joint or in both, uh, for example, part of the bone. So from that point of view, most of the cases will be misled or it will be misdiagnosed uh, to other causes uh, of pain, let's say, in the bone rather than a vascular necrosis.
So what are the causes of a vascular necrosis or osteonecrosis? The first important cause, it is a trauma or bone trauma. So if the patient develop any trauma to the bone, usually one of the consequences of trauma will be a vascular necrosis. Another cause of a vascular necrosis is it what we call it the fatty deposit or fatty thrombus. Usually there will be a part of the fat or the oily part of the body that will migrate to the uh, blood vessel and then it will block the blood supply. Usually a vascular necrosis will be associated with other diseases, for example, uh, sickle cell anemia. And we all know that sickle cell anemia, it is just one kind of abnormality or anemia that usually the shape of the blood cell will be uh, crescenteric in shape and it will block the supply in the small blood vessel that usually it will supply the bone. So from all these, uh, let's say, causes, we can uh, just emphasize a point that any blockage to the blood supply from the vessel to the bone will lead to a vascular necrosis and the most commonest, let's say, presentation will be pain. It is very important to know when to seek a medical advice. If the pain is persistent and it is very severe, and usually it will not be relieved by, uh, let's say, any painkiller. The first thing that you need to do is to seek a medical advice to rule out causes of a vascular necrosis. How do we diagnose the causes of a vascular necrosis? To diagnose a vascular necrosis, you need to rule out the underlying cause. For example, if the patient were involved in a road traffic accident, and then you notice that such a patient is having a very severe form of pain, then it is important to rule out the vascular necrosis. Patient who is having, a, let's say, a congenital abnormality or an inherited disease like sickle cell anemia, usually they will be more prone to develop a vascular necrosis, and the presentation of the vascular necrosis in those patients will be in the form of pain attack or painful crisis where the pain will be very severe and it will not be relieved by simple analgesia. So to diagnose a vascular necrosis, you need to rule out underlying cause and sometimes we might need to proceed to use a more complicated, let's say, a procedure like, for example, angiography just to rule out the blockage in the, uh, let's say, blood vessel. So to know this, we need to use this angiography, which indicate or which is in a very simple uh, word, uh, injection of some color, let's say, or dye inside the uh, blood vessel, and it will go directly to the uh, blood supply and all over the body. And most of the time, it will give us a very clear idea about the site of the cutting of the blood supply. Another thing also it is to use the uh, bone densimetry or bone density uh, imaging and most of the time using the BMD or the bone densimetry along with MRI will be uh, enough to diagnose a vascular necrosis rather than doing more complicated uh, diagnostic procedure.